Welcome back, Controls Champions, to another installment of the Breen Machine video blog. I'm your host, John Breen, and we're finally there. We're going to make our first program in a Cognex camera. We've set up our lighting, our image, we got connected. Let's get to it. Okay, so shameless plug, I'm using one of our flyers here. I think this is gonna be a good example for us. It is a very common inspection job in industry to search for the presence or absence of something. We're looking for labels, we're looking for parts, whatever it may be. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna approach this in the most general way I can think of because I want this to be applicable outside of Cognex, outside of presence, absence, outside of my flyer here. I want you to be able to take this to your to, to a real project. We're gonna focus on this in two steps. First step is finding the part, location. The second step is inspecting the part. In this case, we're checking to see if something is there. In other cases, maybe we would measure something or check for roundness or look for defects. So here are the two flyers that we're gonna be looking at. This one is regular and this one is modified. You can see that I've crossed this out with a marker this has been redacted, it's top secret now. So we're gonna pretend that this is a part and this is a label on the part. Your champion in automation is a label that's being applied to this package, this assembly, whatever it is. And looking for labels is very common in industry, particularly in medical packaging. Labeling is very, very important. So I've seen a lot of cases where we're looking for a label, we're checking to make sure it's spelled right and everything else. We're just gonna make sure there's a label at all right now. This is a label and this is no label. Let's get to it. So if I jump on my computer here, I've got a nice picture already set up for us. Again, step one is we're gonna locate the part. Now there are two ways that you might typically do this or, or I think two most common ways to do this. The first is to look for a pattern, which is what I'm going to do in this example. The second that I wanna show you first, just so you see what it looks like, is to locate edges. So I'm gonna start by finding edges. There's this edge tool down here. We're in the locate portion of the Insight software right now. And you can see there's only one section in the locate portion. So that's all we've got to look at. I'm gonna start by grabbing an edge. Now it just finds all the edges it can find as a way to give you a starting point. So I'm gonna say, let's look for this side right here. That's a good edge to look at. Say okay, and it's gonna draw a little box there. And I can expand this box with the idea that I want to be able to find this part even if it's not exactly at that spot. And you might notice down here, this is showing the contrast. This tiny little arrow here shows left to right. It's looking for contrast across this whole line. So as I expand this, you see that line that it found is it's not really moving, it's just showing that it's uh, you know at 30% across this measure instead of 50% across the measure. So this is the way you can see if you're doing a good job. Now, I often, when I'm using an edge tool, I often end up using something relatively narrow and kind of long. And the reason I do that is because I can avoid things that are confusing, like this other line here. You see that this actually appears to the camera like a better fit, so that's the one it found. And that's probably not what we want. So if we go long and narrow like this, we can move it up and then we're away from that line. Now, there are times when we can't get away from it. So in those cases, there are other things we can do. Like for example, here, again, going left to right, we have a light to dark transition and then a dark to light transition. And you can tell the camera specifically which one you're interested in doing. So if we go to settings, and I look at edge transition, it's set for both right now. And I can say, no, I only want the dark to light because coming left to right, that's that's the edge of the, of the card. Okay, so I've got one line, one edge detected. Let's say I wanna detect the top edge as well. I'm just gonna pick any line to start with here. And we'll expand that a bit. I didn't leave a ton of space up here because I'm not planning on searching this way, but you know, maybe it would be nice to have more space. I am gonna bring this down so that when we move the card around, we can still find it. I wanna say also, notice that these two are connected. There's a little magic happening in the background here called fixturing. 
And I'm gonna talk more about that in a minute. For now, I'm just gonna say if I move this, the other one moves with it. They move together, so they're, they're relative now, they're connected. Now that I've got two lines, I'm looking for the corner, the edge intersection, and that's gonna be kind of the end all be all of my location. I'll have these lines, I'll have rotation, I'll have a single point. So I have to select the two lines that I've found. They come up green on the screen. And now I have a corner. Now, just because of the way the optics work, this line doesn't look like it's straight. So the corner doesn't end up being perfect. But that, like I say, that's just how the optics work. You know, I may do better if I bring this up a little bit. Of course, I'll have to move this box as well because of the fixed string. There we go. The corner's a lot closer now because we're at a closer point on this pretend curved line. Anyway, I'm not really looking to use this for our inspection today, so I'm just gonna delete these. I just wanted to show that to you before we move on. So I'm gonna click on the tool over on the right. I'm gonna hit delete and then enter to say yes. I'm sure I wanna delete it. Okay, so the way I'm actually going to be locating this part and like I say, this is a common way to do it, either to locate the full part as a pattern or just part of the part as a pattern. I'm gonna locate our logo. And I'm gonna use the Patmax Redline pattern for that. So I'm just making sure that this is all the way in. Now, you don't want to put this line right up to the edge of whatever you're detecting it needs to have some contrast. So it has to have some of the white pixels and some of the black pixels in there to find those lines. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got a few pixels there. That looks good. The search region here, the region of interest, we're gonna make sure that we're searching the whole thing because I wanna find this card wherever it is. I'll click on okay. Now notice all these little green lines. This pattern matching tool, PatMax, in the background has found all the things based on contrast that it thinks are lines. And it's just remembered that that's the model. That's the thing that it's looking for. I don't have a good example of this right now. Maybe if I stick my finger in here, take another picture. If I get my finger in the way, you can still see all the lines from the pattern that it's looking for. So this is just the remembered pattern. Okay, the next thing we wanna do with our inspection is to see if that label is there. I suppose it's also good just to point out, this does follow that card around. So it looks like it's doing pretty well. Okay, now for many inspections, we would come down to this inspect part tab and we've got some of the same tools down here, but we've got a lot more tools also. We've got barcodes, we've got uh, OCR, we've got counting and measuring all sorts of great stuff there. We don't actually need it right now. We can do all of our inspection just in the locate part because we're using the same tool again. It's just a pattern match. And in this case, again, we're looking to see if that label is applied. That's the model. And we're also gonna change this search region. We don't care if the label is over here, over here, over here, or, or rather that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a label right here. So I'm gonna set this search region so that it's looking right there. We'll click okay and let it do its thing. Notice again, this automatically did that fixed string for us. Now, if it didn't do fixed string for us and we wanted it to, the place to check for that is right here, tool fixture. And we see pattern one dot fixture. You know, I'm gonna give these some names so that they're less confusing. I'm gonna name this one logo. And we'll name this one label. Okay, so like I was saying, label is automatically fixtured to logo. This tool fixture just says logo.fixture. This is an output of that tool. If I click on logo, Notice that it doesn't have a fixture. It's just searching in this region and this region doesn't change, doesn't move. If I come back to label though, this search region does move and it moves based on wherever the logo is found. So let me just move this around and prove it to you. 
that search region is following. And I'll come back to that one that failed. Notice that it failed not because it couldn't find your champion in automation, although it, it probably couldn't at that angle. It failed because it didn't find the logo. And we can also see that here. If the uh, fixturing element doesn't find what it's looking for, obviously everything downstream is not gonna work either. So in this case, why don't we just uh, take a look at the logo, ask ourselves why it failed the inspection. And I'm gonna guess it's because this rotational tolerance is set to 15 degrees. That's obviously more than 15 degrees, so we would need this to be a little higher. Now, this is plus or minus, so out of 360 degrees, 180 is max. I'll just type 360 for the sake of showing you that it's going to fill in on its own 180 degrees. Now that we've done that, it looks like it's finding, uh, it's finding this. It's still not finding this because that has its own rotational tolerance. And this is an interesting thing. I don't know if it's true about every tool, but it seems that in this case, this tool is not fixturing on the rotation of this tool. The label is not fixturing rotationally off of the logo. And I don't know why that is. Uh, in this case, I feel like it would have made more sense for this tool to use a rotational fixture as well. Anyway, let's come back to label and I'll just uh, increase that rotational tolerance as well. And now it finds it. So again, I can keep moving this around and it finds it, it passes. Well, I think it didn't pass there because of the shadow of my hand. Don't use ambient lighting, right? But it works here for demo. Okay, now I'm going to uh, take this one that I've got scribbled out, or I've scribbled out your champion automation, and we'll just show you that that fails. And again, this is simulating having a label that has not been applied. Keep searching for it in the right place, but there's no label there. Okay, so quick summary. Generally, vision applications start with location and end with inspection, and then of course output that wherever they're gonna output the results. And that's what we've done. We did a location based on a logo, and then we inspected based on presence or absence of this pattern. So I hope that was helpful. Please comment, share, like, subscribe, I want to keep this conversation going. I want this to be helpful for you and, and for industry in general. So let me know what you think, and I'll be able to do a better job at that.